Let's take a look at this project, which is MLOps inference using the Onyx model format mounted via EFS and also invoked via AWS Lambda. So the reason for doing this is so that you can use serverless technology, like in this case, it would be AWS Lambda to serve out inference. And this is an emerging standard here where the advantages of serverless is you don't have to manage it. It's easy to deploy, especially if you're using a high performance language that supports binary deployment like Rust. All you need to do is go through here and uh, deploy a binary that has the ability to mount the model via EFS. So let's go ahead and walk through exactly how this would work. So first up, you're going to need to uh, have access to EFS you're going to need to create an EFS mount point. We'll cover that in a second. And your development environment, at least in terms of putting the files there, probably be, should be something like AWS Cloud9. And so what you need to do is follow the instructions for EFS on how to mount the EFS uh, volume on, on the Cloud9 environment. Put whatever you need on there. For example, you could put 1, 2, 10, 20 Onyx models, mount them in EFS. But you also need to make sure that you're able to uh, expose port 5049 so that it, it is able to actually uh, talk to that Cloud9 environment. Similarly, with AWS Lambda, there's a couple of things that you have to do that are non-intuitive. Again, through a VPC, you'll need to actually have access to port 5049 so that those two services can communicate with each other. And you'll also need to set up a file system. And this is actually a component that is available with AWS Lambda. You can set up a file system. Uh, and one of the things that you have to do is actually set up an access point via EFS in order to do this. And again, we'll walk through this in a second. Finally, once you've got all that set up, you can then go to a different development environment if you want. I prefer GitHub Codespaces, and you can use the Cargo Lambda package to you know, go back and forth and test out your deployment and actually get things cooking. So let's go ahead and walk through how we would do that. So again, the, the goal here is to use this Onyx runtime here uh, because it is the ability to uh, really def refine the way you invoke models. Uh, you have uh, the ability to use just this runtime for multiple formats. It actually uh, has better performance and, and smaller size as well. So that's really the, the goal here with that. So first up here, let's go over to uh, the file system, EFS. So if we look at Amazon EFS here, you can see it's an elastic file system. To create one, it's pretty simple. You know, you just go through, you just create a default uh, file system here, and that's it. Now, once you've created it, if we go through here, let's take a look at some of the things that are important to be aware of. So one of them is the attachment. So in order to put the files onto EFS, you're going to have to attach it. So this is a really good way to start is click on attach and notice that it will give you the ability to mount via DNS, which is a good idea. And all you need to do if you use the EFS mount helper is just run this command and then EFS will be available on, for example, Cloud9. Now, the one thing to be aware of here is that you do have to set up the security group. So let's go ahead and look at this and we go over here and we look at the instructions here, you can see that this is really a, a how-to guide on step-by-step -step on how to set it up. So I would recommend you use the mount helper here. Go ahead and do that. Once you've got that set up, let's go over to EC2 here. You're going to need to make sure that your security groups have the ability to communicate via 5049. So anything that communicates with it, whether it's Cloud9, a virtual machine, Lambda, it must have the ability to talk to that uh, 5049. So now again, if we look at the, uh, the the source here, the important thing is to look back. If we go back to this file system and we look at the uh, network here and we look at the security group, if we see this, these are the security group here. That is going to have to be uh, hooked up again into, into here so that you're able to actually communicate via 5049. So this is probably one of the, the trickiest things to, to remember initially. Once you've got that set up, then the other thing that is a little bit tricky is we have to go back over to this Onyx uh, Lambda that we've set up here. You can just set up you know, a, a Lambda function, is that under configuration, you do have to have a VPC. So notice here we've got this VPC. 
so that we've been able to communicate with the security group that we care about here. Uh, and also, the other thing that we have to set up here is we have to set up the file system. So this is probably the trickier part here is if we go to file system, notice here that it, we have file system ID and we have access point. So uh, in order to set up the file system, and notice we also have the mount point, which I say mount point EFS. In order to set that up, if we go back to EFS here and we go to access points, that's all you need to do is you just say create access point. Once you've created the access point here, you can actually um, then mount it into the uh, AWS Lambda. Now there is actually a, a nice article that I would recommend looking at that will expose uh, a little bit of information. If we go through here and you go using Amazon EFS for Lambda in your serverless application, it'll walk you through all the steps that you can go through, how to create the file system, et cetera, et cetera. So that's really it, is, is, is just to have those things hooked up here. Um, now finally, once you wanna start developing, once you've copied the Onyx file over there, the only other thing you need to do is again, go into uh, whatever it is that you've got. In this case, I have Onyx EFS Lambda. Let's go ahead and CD into this directory. And let's take a look at the code. So in this code here, first I have a library, and this library code allows us to uh, basically do an Onyx inference. Now notice this is important here, is that I'm saying with the model from the file, use the model that I put onto the EFS file system. In this case, it would be MNT EFS squeeze net. Uh, and then once I do that, I do my invocation in the code and it returns back the score. In terms of the main right here, uh, the other thing to be aware of is that I have a, a little helper method that I like to put here that look what it does. It, it actually reads the mount point and lists the files just so I can verify that I know what's inside of this mount point. I think that's a typically a, a good idea. And then finally, inside of here, I just do the uh, invocation which again does the scores and gives us the results of the inference from the Onyx runtime. Now, the only other thing that we need to, to do to kind of play around with this is I like to put a, a make file here together so that I, I make it really easy to test it. So in this case, I would just need to source my virtual environment because it does actually use Python, believe it or not, to, to use uh, the, uh, the deployment. Uh, at least in, in order to install the extension for, for Cargo. And then in order to test it, I can just type in um, make invoke, and this will actually send a payload over to uh, the Lambda. And notice what it does. It says, oh look, I'm mounting this runtime. So I think this is really a good idea for debugging is to have that list type method available. And then again, uh, you can just invoke it and you can see that in fact it is running. So there are quite a few moving pieces when you're building this. You can actually go through and look at this repo here, this Rust MLOps template, go to Onyx EFS Lambda, and this will be able to walk you through. But I think that the big thing as well is just to, from an architectural standpoint, remember what the key pieces are. This is the center that everything needs to talk to. You must always have access to 5049. Follow the EFS mount instructions that are available on the console for EFS to, to mount this, um, copy the model onto from, from this location to EFS. On Lambda, you've got to, again, make sure that the VPC uh, is set up and it has access to 5049. Make sure you set up the file system access point, and this is actually what's going to invoke it. So you can even invoke it by just selecting it. In terms of development, I do believe GitHub Codespaces is an ideal environment to develop in because you get access to Copilot. You can actually go through and, and test back and forth. So that's it. In a nutshell, uh, I think this is going to be an emerging way that MLOps uh, is going to be used in many organizations as they leverage Rust plus Onyx plus EFS plus AWS Lambda.